You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we're going into part two of two. I'm telling you the garbage that you need to unlearn that you were taught in school that none of the teachers are gonna tell you that you need to unlearn because that would you know, undermine their own credibility. So I already gave you the intro to this in yesterday's masterclass. So if you didn't hear yesterday's, just go back one episode to whatever, Wherever you're listening to this, go back to the previous episode and listen to that to make sure that you know where we're coming from here and you have an idea of where we're going. So let's get right into it. Uh, actually, before I get into it, let me also let me tell you, as I usually do, that I have a daily motivation text I send out free of charge to everyone who's in my text community. Message guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. Text me at this number, 305-384-6894, and tomorrow morning when I send it out, if you already missed today's, you'll be getting that daily motivation text. Second, work on your game universe. University.com. That is the place where you get some real life education straight from me, straight from my courses. I got 20 plus courses on there and everything from mindset to business to uh, pers interpersonal relations to communication skills to uh, leadership. All of that is covered inside of work on your game university.com. Go there, see your options. You can be coached by me directly. You get my physical mailings that I send out every single month. Yes, physical, not emails, not PDFs. Physical mailings I send to your physical doorstep every month, twice a month. That is all at or two two mailings per month. I might send them together, but sometimes it'll be individual. That is at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Now let's get right to it. Point number four, we are picking up where we left off yesterday. The garbage that you learned in school that you need to unlearn. Number four, learning to the test. Let me explain you what this is. As we touched on in uh, yesterday's episode, in school you are given certain information that is all based on the testing that you'll be given. Now, in some ways, it's good to learn to the test if you're trying to play the game. Now, if you're trying to play the game, for example, if you're a student right now in school, you should learn to the test because the better you learn to the test, the better you'll be able to pass the test. And then when you pass the test, you'll be able to move up to the next grade, get your degree, your diploma, your certification, whatever it is that you're trying to get. The danger in this, the booby trap in learning to the test is that you have not learned any real life application to what you're doing and you might only learn to, if you only know how to hustle, then you don't learn how, you're not actually learning any real information that is actually applicable in the real world. So if you ever step out of that space where you're learning to the test and you have to actually apply what you allegedly know in the real world, uh, people are gonna find out that you're, no, you're swimming naked. And as the saying goes, we don't find out who's swimming naked until the tide goes up. So, you're given certain information in school that's based on the testing that you'll be given. So I wanna make sure y'all understand the game here. And once you understand that your teachers and principals and the administrators at your schools either did or are, if you're in school right now, did if you are finished school, they are playing the game as well. And you gotta understand this, you are the pawn in the game. You're the pieces on the board, they are the ones controlling the game. Let me explain to you exactly what I mean and how this works. The teachers are the people in charge, right? That's how school is set up. You go to class, there's a teacher in the front of the room and they are in charge, at least in that classroom during that class period. The principal is the person in charge of the teachers, okay? And they're in charge of you. The way that the teachers and the principals are evaluated in the American educational system, and for the most part, is something that you should understand. And even if you're out of school, you should understand this so you understand why you were taught the way that you were taught. If you're a parent, you need to understand this because this is what they're doing to and with your kids. And if you are a current student, this is what they're doing to you. All right, the way that the teachers and principals are evaluated, you gotta understand this because they, their job is based on looking good in their evaluations. How do teachers and principals get evaluated? They get evaluated not necessarily based on how much students are learning, or how much the knowledge of the students has expanded over the course of a school year, because that can often be hard to quantify. So schools, one thing that schools do well is that they figure out a way to measure and quantify the performance of their, uh, their workers, which is something that you should do in any business that you're in. You should have a way to measure and quantify whether you're doing better or worse. School has a way of doing this, but unfortunately the way that they do it 
the person who bears the brunt of this, the people who bear the brunt of this faulty process are the students. Okay, so parents out there and current students, pay attention to this. The way that teachers are evaluated is based on how the students are evaluated. How are students evaluated? Students are evaluated based on standardized testing. Now, here's the challenge with standardized testing. All right, human beings are not standardized. All right, each one of us is unique. The standardized testing is ostensibly supposed to gauge how much knowledge and learning each student has absorbed over the course of the year or you know, the entire process. That's why to get into college, you usually have to take some type of standardized test. And your score on that standardized test determines which colleges are even interested in you, let alone which ones you can actually get into. And then you get the privilege of paying them sixty dollars to $200,000 to go there. But being that the tests are standard, and that human beings are not standard, we are all unique and different, this presents a conflict that simply does not add up. Here's the conflict. Any student who goes to school and is incapable of, not, let's not even say incapable, but is just incongruent with the standard process of learning, and there are many students who are like this, they get treated as if they are some sort of, the student themselves is some sort of problem that needs to be fixed when there's actually nothing wrong with the student. I'm sure there are some people listening to this who you've had this situation where you were treated as if something was wrong with you or the teachers at the school, the administrators were calling your parents up to the school and explaining to them that something might be wrong with you or that you had some kind of learning disability simply because you did not absorb information or regurgitate that information in a standard way. You were treated as if something was wrong with you when it's actually the system is designed to only serve standard people and people who learn the standard way. So if you were anything other than standard, you were looked at as if you were a problem and people needed to fix you in some way and you got punished for that. And that can lead to all kinds of psychological and emotional issues with, especially with young people because they, their brains aren't fully developed enough to notice the bullshit and call it out the way that I am as a 40 year old adult. You're eight years old, you can't understand this, you can't explain this and if your parents don't understand it, then you might be, you just might get fucked over by the system because the system is set up in this way. So. There may be nothing wrong with you, but you get treated as if you're bad in some way. And what the teachers do, trying to save their own asses and make themselves look good, because to make them look good, what do the teachers get? You gotta understand, people are driven by incentives, folks. It's not that the teachers are bad people, they're driven by incentives the same way that you are. How a teacher keeps their job or gets a pay raise or is able to move up and ascend in their careers, because some teachers want to become higher paid teachers, some teachers want to become principals, some principals want to become superintendents, they want to move up. How do they do that? The only way they can do that is by looking at the metric by which they are measured, which is how good do your students perform on standardized tests, even though the standardized test may not be a great reflection of how well the teacher is doing, but this is the only metric that they have, so this is the way that they measure people. And you can see how this becomes a whole bunch of bullshit really quickly. You see how this works? So it's not necessarily a bad thing that the teachers are focused on self-preservation because so are you and so am I, is that the, the teachers will teach the students whatever will help the students do well on the standardized tests because, again, that will make the teacher look good. And that will make the, let the teacher get their next promotion, et cetera, et cetera. So do you understand how this kind of, it goes from the aim of educating students to the aim of let's just keep pushing the hustle. The hustle is we gotta, we gotta make you students look good on this test so I can keep my job. That's the teacher's mindset because they, this is the way they're, they're evaluated. It's not their fault. Again, I did an episode, let me tell you what episode that was. I did an episode where I, uh, shitted on the medical system in the United States. That was in episode 2338. And I gave the disclaimer in that episode that I don't have a problem with people who work in the medical system. If you're a doctor or a nurse or a surgeon or anesthesiologist or anybody who works at, within the American medical system, especially if you work at a hospital, even though I trash the American medical system, it's not personal against you because you just worked in the system. You didn't create the system, it's not your fault. If you work in the judicial system and somebody shits on a judicial system, if you're a cop or a judge or a public defender, it's not your fault that the system is fucked up. You just work there. All right, you didn't make the system, you just work in the system. Same thing in the educational system. I know a whole lot of people who are teachers who work in the educational system. Educational system is trash. That doesn't mean that you are trash. So if there's a teacher listening to this, this is not personally against you, but this system is garbage. You just happen to work there. And so what happens is this becomes the hustle and in real life, nobody cares that you can regurgitate information from a book. It doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter you can regurgitate information from a book because now we get all our information at our fingertips at any time. You don't need to regurgitate anything. People can go read a book by themselves anyway. And in the real world, you have to be able to think on your feet and solve complex problems with your own ingenuity, not simply regurgitating what you heard or read from somebody else. Because if that's all you have to offer, then you have no value in the marketplace. Your real value in the marketplace is what do you bring to the table that cannot be replicated by another person? If you cannot articulate that or demonstrate that, then you become a commodity and commodities get sold at Walmart. And you know what Walmart's slogan is? Everyday low prices. I don't think you want to be in a place with everyday, you don't want to be sold on a shelf of a place that advertises everyday low prices because how are you going to take care of your needs, food, clothing, shelter, if you're a commodity competing with other seemingly interchangeable items like other people and your competitors. That's why I'm learning to the test and this whole hustle that the education system is set up for, it does not serve you. It serves them, but it doesn't serve you. Point number five. Today's topic, once again, is the garbage that you need to unlearn from going to school. Number five is doing the bare minimum. I don't know. Now, when it comes to being a student, this is one that I can speak on with an expert level of experience. In school, I learned probably by around, let me see, this is probably around, probably about seventh grade. I learned that the game was simply, I could just do enough work to get by, enough to get a C grade, A, B, C, and that would help me pass each class and help me move on to the next level and eventually I could get a degree. In sports, for example, specifically in football and basketball, you may hear a coach say this, they may not say it out loud, but they'll say it in private to their players. They say, C's get degrees. All right, that's what football and basketball players get told. I'm not saying every coach says this, but they do get told that and listen, it's a fact. Right, I graduated with a my college final GPA, I believe, was a 2.6. Now, I have more than the 2.6 level of intelligence, so to speak, if you want to measure it that way. We shouldn't measure it that way. The thing is, as I just told you, I just confessed to you, by about seventh grade, it was around age 12, I realized, all right, I could just do enough work to get by. I'm not going to apply myself academically. There are other people who choose to do so. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make me right. It's just what I chose to do. All right, the point being, there is a bare minimum level of effort that when applied at school will allow you to skate by and you can graduate, you get the same degree as the person who gave a full level effort and got a, a 4.0 GPA. And here's the thing, once you get out of school, nobody really gives a damn about your GPA. At least let's just say a worst case scenario, maybe your first job, your GPA might matter. In the world we're living in today, I don't think it even matters even then. So all that extra effort all that extra effort that you gave can be character building and it can be habit building. And then just given a bare minimum effort to achieve that C, that can hurt you in the long run too, because this is the fifth point. The fifth point is the habit of doing the bare minimum. So let me explain to you, let me explain this a little bit more. Because the system is standardized, but throwing a bunch of non-standard people into it, so the system is already messed up because you're sending non-standard people into a standardized system. A bunch of people get by just giving the bare minimum effort, like me. And then they get degrees that mean absolutely nothing, like mine, because they have learned nothing, like I didn't. They just did enough to get by, like I did. All right, so I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm case zero for this. So what do they call it? Patient zero for this whole concept of here, what I'm telling you on point number five. The bare minimum effort level will cause people in, in real life, because if this becomes a habit and you're not able to turn it on and off, this can cause somebody to be a loser, mediocre at best in the real world. Now, the good news for me is that I understood exactly what I was doing. Many students do not understand that they're doing this bare minimum level effort, and they take this with them through the rest of life because they are fooled into believing that this is just all they'll need to do when it's not all they need to do. I understood that I was doing the bare minimum while I was doing the bare minimum. I knew I could have gave more effort. I just chose not to. This was completely voluntary. And when I got out of school, I knew, okay, if I'm going to go to the next level in sports, if I'm going to do what I'm going to do in business, I got to give a full level of effort, which I was able to do. I was able to turn on that switch. I understood, again, I knew exactly what I was doing. I was in complete control. But many people don't understand this. And school is set up this way, that if you give a bare minimum effort, you get this bare minimum grade and you can move on and school conditions us for this. So I still blame the educational system for this nonsense, even though I'm, I guess you could call it a success story of the system. This is not a good real world strategy to give a bare minimum level effort at what you do. But school conditions you to do just this. 
The good thing is, again, I was able to avoid it becoming a lifelong habit because I was conscious about it. But many people don't understand it, they don't avoid it, and as a matter of fact, they lean into it and it becomes a habit all of their lives and that's, it doesn't end up in good outcomes. They, these people become the, the entry level slash minimum wage workers working at a grocery store when they don't notice that every six months that grocery store replaces more of the human cash register cash register checkout people with more self-service kiosks to the point that there are no more humans working at the registers and it's all self-service kiosks and you don't have a job anymore and with no skills because you've been given a bare minimum level effort your entire life uh, you got a problem point number six today's topic once again is the garbage that you have to unlearn from going to school number six is you learn the habit of avoiding learning now this is, and I'm using learning here, I should use air quotes when I say learning, because what gets taught in school, a lot of it is not really learning, it's memorizing and regurgitation. But since we're told that you go to school to learn, like that's what we're told by our parents, right? You gotta go to school so you can learn stuff, so you can be smarter, so you can get a job, and this and that, and all the other nonsense that our parents say to us, and I might even say to my child when he starts going to school. Thing is, since we look at school as learning, but because the system is set up in such a terrible way that turns many people off from what school is doing and we're looking at school as learning, we become, uh, we have a aversion, an aversion to the concept of learning. So then when we get out of school and it's time to learn some real stuff and get some real game, like at workonyourgameuniversity.com, people don't want to learn anymore because school conditioned you to hate the concept of learning. Even though the learning that you're being offered in the real world is completely different than that other learning, you have already been you have already been conditioned to not want to do it. So then you never take that next step. And again, this is what leads to being a loser. What leads to being mediocre at best in life because school set you up to fail. This is what the educational system does. Because of all the points mentioned above, many students become disillusioned with the concept of school and in turn the concept of learning. Because of the way that it's presented, especially if the student is marked as a bad student or somehow they're marked as unable to learn simply because they don't fit what the standardized system requires, some students grow into adults who are disillusioned with the concept of knowledge and education. So these are the people who don't read any books, they will not sign up for a course, they will not go to a conference, they will not hire a coach, even though doing these exact things will help them tremendously. They've already been conditioned since they were five years old that something was wrong with them when it came to learning. So now they are not interested in anything that sounds like learning. They're not interested in anything that sounds like education. Everybody following what I'm saying here? So they become uninterested in taking courses, investing in themselves, reading books, learning anything for the rest of their lives because their childhood was scarred by the nonsense. So these are just some of the ways, I could go on and on, but I'm gonna stop here at point number six. Some of the ways that school sets us up with garbage that we gotta get out of our heads. So let's recap part two of two here, the garbage that you need to unlearn from what you were taught in school. Number four, learning to the test. This is all just part of the hustle in the system that the teachers are evaluated by how well the students do on the test and the principal is evaluated by how well the teachers do in getting their students to do well on those tests. So all the teachers do is teach to whatever's gonna be on the test, even though what's on the test may not be necessarily useful or applicable in real life, but it helps the teachers get by in their real lives, but doesn't help you as a student do anything in your real life. So they are basically sacrificing your learning for their, they're sacrificing your future for their right now. And I'm not saying every teacher does this, but this is the way that the system is set up. Point number five is doing the bare minimum. All right. You learn at some point in school that you can give a bare minimum effort and succeed. You can move on, C's, get degrees, end up getting a college degree by giving a bare minimum effort. And the challenge for many people, unlike myself, is that they don't understand that this is what the system is and that they got to turn that bare minimum level up to a full level of effort in real life because that's the only way they're going to be successful and be all that they can be. They don't realize that, so they take that bare minimum level effort with them through the rest of life and they end up being mediocre at best. And point number six, avoiding learning. Because some students get marked as a bad student or an, a challenged student or uh, unable to learn or something's wrong with you because you're not fitting the standardized system, because you're not a standardized person, which it makes sense that you don't fit the standardized system. Many people get turned off from the very concept of learning. So then when they get out of school, they're uninterested in anything that sounds like learning. Courses, books, events, programs, coaching. They're not interested in any of that because school conditioned them that they're hard of learning, that they're, they're a challenged learner or that they failed at learning. So now they don't wanna do anything that reminds them of those scars from their childhood. So this sets them up for the rest of their lives to again, be mediocre at best. All that said, 
text me, tell me the best insight you got from today's class. My number is 305-384-6894. Reference the episode number so I know which one you're talking about when you tell me the uh, best thing you got from this. Second, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. You can get a real life education, some real learning from and some real talk from a real teacher who can actually tell you what you need to know, not just what you want to know. I'm not teaching you to the test. All right, I have no bosses above me. I can tell you what you really need to know to succeed in the real world, uh, not the bullshit that's happening in the educational system. All that said, again, that's workonyourgameuniversity.com. All that said, work on your game. Dre all day.